Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Let's take a look at 10 of the very best business-related books that you can give as gifts for birthdays, New Year's, Christmas, or any other special event that you're looking to celebrate. Now, for this particular list, I've focused on books that are highly engaging. They're fun to read. They're often very entertaining. They're about business, but they're the kinds of books that almost anybody would enjoy reading. Now, if what you're looking for is more of an educational book about digital marketing, entrepreneurship, product management, or other business-related topics, I do have dedicated lists with my favorite books on those subjects and several others, and I'll link those up for you down in the episode description box. But for this list, we're gonna focus on highly engaging business books. So let's get started with book number one, Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in a Silicon Valley Startup by John Carreyrou. This book documents the incredible rise and eventual fall of Theranos, a business that was once valued at $9 billion. Theranos promised to revolutionize the blood testing process. So the founder, Elizabeth Holmes, a central character in the book, spread the word that they had a brand new approach to blood testing that would change everything and would make it significantly easier for people to not only test themselves, but to find out whether or not they had an underlying health issue. The unfortunate reality though, is that the technology never worked. They were never able to make it work and much, much worse than that, they lied about that and covered that fact up for a very, very long time. So the book, tells the story of how a business was able to reach a $9 billion valuation without actually delivering the underlying technology that they promised. It's a fascinating read and one that I'm sure almost anybody interested in business would enjoy. So I highly recommend you consider this book if you're looking for an interesting gift. Let's continue on to book number two, The Smartest Guys in the Room, The Amazing Rise and Scandalous Fall of Enron by Bethany McLean and Peter Elkind. This book is a little bit dated at this point, but it tells the incredible story of Enron's rise and eventual collapse around 2001. Now, before it collapsed, Enron was seen as an amazing and incredible business. The team there was seen as being absolutely brilliant. They were gonna change the world. They were gonna change the way that energy is managed and traded. And they were seen as the next great American company that was leading an entirely new approach to growth and the future of the economy in some ways. Unfortunately, the business was not nearly as stable as it seemed, and this book describes the incredibly toxic culture at that business where many people that worked there were incredibly greedy, incredibly selfish, and how the business really cheated when it came to how it tracked their growth and their revenue. They used manipulative accounting techniques, and the book just documents the entire process, how this business became so big and how it eventually collapsed. Another incredible book that I highly recommend if you're looking for an excellent gift. Let's continue on to Super Pumped, The Battle for Uber by Mike Isaac. This book tells the incredible story of Uber, how it came to be, how it grew so quickly, and the many challenges along the way. As with many highly successful companies, Uber didn't start out with a perfect plan. They didn't set out to revolutionize the way that people use taxis. Instead, the original founders simply set out to create a premium black car service that they could summon using their iPhone. And it was that initial idea that eventually evolved into the Uber that we know today. So this book explains how all of that happened and how Travis Kalanick eventually took the company, grew it so quickly, and how the internal culture became so toxic and destructive throughout that rapid growth process. So it's a fantastic book that documents exactly how Uber became so successful, and it talks briefly about some of their recent challenges with Travis Kalanick eventually leaving the company because of some of the underlying 
toxic issues in the workplace. Very interesting book. Let's continue on to conspiracy. Peter Thiel, Hulk Hogan, Gawker, and the Anatomy of Intrigue by Ryan Holiday. Of all of the books on the list, this is probably the least business-focused, but it does tell an incredible story. On the one hand, you have billionaire tech investor Peter Thiel, and on the other, you have a massively popular media site in Gawker Media. Now, you may or may not have heard of this story, and regardless of whether or not you have, the story in terms of how it's told in this book is really fascinating. It's a very balanced description of how, on the one hand, you have a media company that in many ways is abusing its freedom of press to publish things like Hulk Hogan's sex tape, and then on the other side, Side of things, you have a billionaire in Peter Thiel that has incredible resources and is able to leverage those resources to try to take down Gawker. So, without giving up too much of the story, in case you're not familiar with it, this is an absolutely fascinating read a real life conspiracy between a media empire and a billionaire, and that billionaire trying to take them down. So, just a really, really interesting read. And even though it's not directly about business, there are some interesting business lessons that do come through in the book. Next on the list is Facebook, The Inside Story by Stephen Levy. Almost everybody uses Facebook or at least knows somebody that uses Facebook. And I think it's fair to say most people are at least vaguely aware of the inception story with Mark Zuckerberg building out the original version of Facebook because of movies like The Social Network that came out in 2010. But this book explains the story in a much more complete and comprehensive way. It tells a lot of interesting insider stories about how the business was built, how it grew so rapidly, major acquisitions along the way, and more recently, the handling of user privacy. It's a very, very compelling book and one that fills in a lot of interesting details. It's the kind of book that by the time you finish reading it, you really wonder if you should continue to use Facebook at all. So whether or not you use Facebook or whether or not the person you plan to give the book to uses Facebook, it's a very interesting look at exactly how the business has operated over the years and one that I think most people would enjoy reading. Let's continue on to Red Notice, a true story of high finance, murder, and one man's fight for justice by Bill Browder. This book is described as a political thriller, and I think that's a very accurate description. It explains how investor Bill Browder was able to become the largest foreign investor in Russia. He bought company vouchers at a time where entire industries were being privatized for the first time, and he was able to buy them up for pennies on the dollar. Now, this turned out to be an incredibly lucrative investment, but, it also put him in the sights of Russian oligarchs, corrupt government officials, and even Vladimir Putin. So without giving too much of the story away, it's a fascinating read with really interesting and at times intense stories about exactly what went on. And it's the kind of book that, again, is enjoyable even for somebody not interested in business, but for those that are, it does include many interesting business lessons along the way. Let's continue on to The Everything Store, Jeff Bezos and the Age of Amazon by Brad Stone. This book documents the incredible story of Amazon and how they became the massively successful e-commerce giant that they are today. Now, I found this book fascinating because I didn't realize just how haphazard and random so many of the early actions in Amazon were. I thought Amazon, even during the crazy times of the dot-com boom, was this very well-managed company that made all the right moves and was almost inevitable in terms of becoming the business that it is today. But much like Uber, it was a lot more haphazard. It wasn't so perfectly planned out. And if there's no nothing else I took away from a book like this, it's that Jeff Bezos is human. He made all kinds of mistakes over the history of Amazon, but ultimately the company became incredibly successful. And another interesting side note is just how much I learned about 
Jeff Bezos and how similar he is to somebody like Steve Jobs in terms of being incredibly difficult to work with. He's very controlling, very exacting, and at times isn't exactly the nicest person to work with. So very interesting perspective there. But overall, just a fascinating read for anybody interested in business. Let's continue on to American Kingpin, the epic hunt for the criminal mastermind behind the Silk Road by Nick Bilton. This is the incredible story of how 26-year-old Ross Ulbricht built a $1.2 billion online drug empire from his laptop as he traveled the world working in coffee shops and libraries and places like that. Now, if you haven't heard of the Silk Road, very similar to eBay or Amazon in that initially it was a store, eventually it was a marketplace where people could buy products and services from other people, but in this case, entirely anonymously over the dark web. And unlike eBay, where you're mostly buying things that are perfectly normal, on Silk Road, you'd be buying things like drugs, forged passports, counterfeit money, and other illegal things like that. Now, the book explains how exactly this platform was built, how people were recruited along the way to help, and interestingly enough, it even explains how people would spend Bitcoin on the platform to buy something, and how that product would ultimately be delivered by the U.S. Postal Service, and then they could go online and much like eBay, leave feedback, letting other people know that that seller is trustworthy. So very interesting how this entire thing was built, and the book explains how ultimately government officials and the FBI tried to discover who built the platform and ultimately tried to capture him. So a very, very interesting book, one that almost anybody would enjoy, but especially so if you're interested in business because there are a lot of practical lessons along the way. Let's continue on to Valley of Genius, The Uncensored History of Silicon Valley by Adam Fisher. I'm a big fan of this book for two reasons. Number one, it provides a detailed account of the history of Silicon Valley, going all the way back to Atari and Apple in the early days, up until more recently with companies like Facebook and Google. But even more interesting than that, number two, the book was written from the perspective of people that were actually there. So rather than the author simply trying to convey what it was like to work in Silicon Valley and to experience many of the interesting things that happened during this time period, the entire content of the book is made up of quotes from people that were actually there. And the author has brilliantly stitched these quotes together together to tell a very compelling narrative. So the book includes quotes from people like Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, Nolan Bushnell, Mark Zuckerberg, Sean Parker, Kevin Kelly, and many, many other people of this caliber that were there over this time period. So very interesting to not only get a much more detailed and comprehensive look at the history of Silicon Valley, but to have it told in the words of people that were actually there, I found the approach absolutely brilliant and I love the book and I highly recommend it to anybody interested in learning more about the history of Silicon Valley. Let's continue on to Billion Dollar Whale, The Man Who Fooled Wall Street, Hollywood, and the World by Tom Wright and Bradley Hope. This is another book that isn't directly related to business, but it's a very interesting read, and it does have the occasional insight about business and is almost certainly a book that somebody who's interested in business would enjoy reading. The book is about Joe Lowe and how he stole billions from state-owned investments and how he lavishly spent that money in an attempt to build some semi-legitimate businesses along the way. But it's a very, very interesting book. One of my favorite little takeaways from the book is how Joe Lowe used stolen investment funds to ultimately fund a movie like The Wolf of Wall Street. So a movie that's all about shady investing, well, the entire thing was backed by stolen money. And in fact, Joe Lowe spent a small fortune 
trying to court celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio to star in his movies. This was one of his attempts at making a legitimate business, but he would excessively spend money trying to appeal to celebrities and to bring them into his orbit, and then he would try to produce a movie like this. And he created The Wolf of Wall Street, or at least he funded it. And funnily enough, Jordan Belfort, the original Wolf of Wall Street, the person that the movie is all about, he had the opportunity to be paid to do some appearances to promote the movie, and apparently he was one of the first people to recognize that there was something wrong with Joe Lowe and the way that he was spending money and that something wasn't quite right, and he actually turned down, I think it was a gig that would pay him something like half a million dollars because he he wasn't interested in working with somebody like Joe Lowe, especially given his own past. So a very interesting story, kind of a takes one to no one situation where he recognized something was wrong with this situation. But another very interesting book, even though it's not directly about business, anyone interested in business would almost certainly enjoy this book. But anyway, those are 10 of the very best books to give as gifts to someone who's interested in business. And again, if you're looking for more of an educational book around topics like digital marketing, entrepreneurship, product management, or even just business in general, I do have dedicated reading lists covering my favorite books on those topics and several others. And I'll link those up for you down in the episode description box. But that's it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments, or if you're looking for a specific book recommendation, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you're interested in more content like this in the future, I recommend that you subscribe or follow my updates on social media. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to connecting with you again in a future episode.